Coach, listen, um, everybody's talking about the big five quarterbacks, but, you know, I watched Kellen Mond for his entire career in College Station. He's your quarterback. You guys went to great heights, had your best season at A&M with him in his senior season on the way out the door. The one thing I saw from him, I just thought he just got better every year, year after year after year. There are questions about his size, his durability. He put all that aside, and he just got better and better and better. Whoever drafts this kid, your guy, is getting what kind of player? A guy that's trying to prove himself every day. And I think that's very important for guys. Because I think, you know, you say, well, I, I want to be a Division One player. Or I want to be an NFL player. Well, I just don't want to get there. I want to stay there. Then I want to be an impact on the team. And I think you got to drive yourself to get better. And he's a guy who's been through the ups and downs. See, some of the, like I say, some guys that get drafted high, and we wonder why, you know, they don't always have success. I've had guys that have done it. Not, they've never faced failure. And sometimes facing failure and facing going through adversity, you don't know what a guy's going to do. You know what Kellen's going to do. He's going to work through it, and he's going to make his guys better. And he's a guy who loves the game. He loves the whys of the game, and I think that's very important in the NFL, especially at quarterback, not knowing that, hey, I just hit the play, but, you know, why that guy was open or why I could protect him. I could change my mics and redeclare the guys, and, and I know where my hots are coming from and things like that. I think they're very important. He's a student of the game, tremendous competitor, and has a very inner self driven guy inside to be successful and prove people that he's, he could be a great player. And I think that's a lot of that fortitude is what it's going to take at the next level because, like you say, the talent levels get equal. Now what, is, what, is, what are you going to do differently with your mindset, your work ethic, and your ability to overcome whatever you have to overcome? Coach, you run a more of a pro-style system, like you said. The yep. where, where's your hot coming from? What are your reads? Where are your side adjustments? You know, who's, who's moving the protections around? What type of offense will fit Kellen best in the NFL? You know, I think a guy that gives him the freedom to work both sides, he understands how to attack coverage. Uh, he understands how to fulfill read things and get across. And, you know, we put a lot of things on him where he can get to all five guys. And I, and I think he's a, if you watch, he's extremely re- understands how to get the ball out. See, the one of the things we had last year, if you look, we were second and third down percentage uh, on the year. And convert. We played like 57%, which is true. Red zone was really good. But also, we only gave up four sacks. Now, our offensive line did a great job, but he knows how to get the ball out. Where he's got to get it to, very rhythmic, can, can cut and, as I say, slice you up and understands how to do that and be patient with it and then throw the deep ball. So I think guys that do that, let them get the ball out, like in the West Coast type system, they get it out, understand how the rhythmic throw it, throw the rhythm throws and then take the shots as they go. But cause he, he, if you watch last year, we didn't have very many negative plays. I mean, we had a lot of great plays, but we didn't have very many negative plays. And you know that, keeping yourself in third and makeables and then being able to convert, I think he does a great job at that. Jimbo Fisher, Texas A&M head football coach, 2013 national champion at Florida State, joining us this morning on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Coach, let me ask you this. You had two former first-round picks in Jameis Winston and E.J. Manuel at the quarterback spot. Where does Kellen kind of compare, fit in with those guys at? He's, he's really in between them because EJ was very athletic. Mm-hmm. It looks like we just lost Coach there. We'll try to get him back. But that's an interesting comparison because the couple of guys like EJ Manuel didn't really work out key at this particular mm-hmm. level in the NFL after he was drafted by Buffalo. But he's saying all the right things, the intangibles – on Mond, he says, are off the charts. And you were you were nodding when he answered my question and said, you know, sometimes facing failure and adversity can make a man. A- adversity is key. When I'm looking at prospects, what type of adversity? Is everything all rosy and great and everything? You know, that guy, I'll check the red box on that guy. Everything's clean. And when you don't have adversity, I don't know your, how you're going to respond when I punch you. Are you going to hit back? Or are you going to fold your tent? And uh, Coach is back. He, uh, Coach, you were just in the midst of comparing E.J. Manuel, some of the other guys you had at FSU, to what you're seeing with Mon. Sorry we got cut off there. Go ahead. Well, I think he's, he can create plays with his legs. Like, E.J. was very athletic, made throws, did things. Uh, Jameis understood the wise. I mean, both of them did, but Jameis would slice and dice you and then create some plays. He's kind of between them. He has, he has uh, traits of both of them. But the one trait, I think, that all of the great ones have to have. They have to be unbelievably competitive. They have to raise the game of the guys around them, which I think we don't always um, pay enough attention to. And how, you know, changing culture. You know, EJ helped change the culture. Jameis took us to another stratosphere like like he did in the mindset of how they got to play. 
But from a physical standpoint, he can rhythmic throw it, get it out, uh, like Jameis didn't do those things. Uh, Jameis was a tremendous deep ball guy. But EJ was so athletic with his legs and create things. So it's kind of a combination of both. But the one thing he has, the competitive nature, the mindset of understanding why things are done, and he raises the games of the guys around him and the culture of how to be successful. Coach, I want to ask you about a couple of guys that you had to prepare for in the SEC that figure into mm -hmm. the early rounds of this year's NFL draft. Mac Jones and Kyle Trask. Who was the tougher guy to prepare for? Well, they both were because they both had great wide receivers around them, too. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were both really good. I mean, what Mac did was amazing to me. They threw the ball down the field so much. But, I mean, they had the skill set to do it. But Mac did. He was so accurate with the ball, and he got it out. He understood where to go with it. Kyle diced you more. Their, their passing game was a, it diced you up more. But uh, both understood ball placement accuracy on both guys. Decision making quarterback gets down to two things. I mean, you got to raise the game around. You got to be competitive. But when you're on the field, your decision making and your accuracy is what what it gets down to. Can I process the information, get it to the right guy, and can I make a throw that gets the guy the ball? And both did that at an extremely high level. I know they had tremendous players around them. I really do. And uh, they both were. We both had great games against us. We beat. We beat. I mean, Alabama beat us 52, 28, or whatever it was. And then Florida, we beat 40, whatever, 44, 41. Both of them moved the ball extremely well. But they're both similar. Mac was really, really great on the deep ball. Trask diced you more underneath with more rhythmic type throws and the guys he had. But I'm going to tell you what, the guys they had around them now, like I say, I think Devontae Smith is phenomenal. But the tight end at, at Florida, guys, that guy don't come around very often. <laughs> That's a guy that I, we just don't talk about enough. And the way that NFL game's played, and the other guy, when you jump on him, Jalen Waddle is a guy that the explosiveness, him and Waddle and the tight end at Florida jump off the screen at you when you watch them on film and, and you have to defend them because they can do so many things.